building robots puts a mirror to us humans. Certainly. It makes us like wonder about like, what is intelligence? What is consciousness? And what is actually valuable about human beings? When when a AI system learns to play chess better than humans, you start to let go of this idea that humans are special because of intelligence. <laughs> it's it's something else. Um, it's the, maybe the flame of human consciousness. It's the capacity to uh, to f- to feel deeply, to sort of to both suffer and to love all those things. And that, that somehow AI to me. So it puts a mirror to that. You mentioned uh, HAL 9000, you have to bring it up, <laughs> with, uh, with with these swarm bots uh, crawling on the surface of your uh, cocoon in space. Right. I mean, all right, let me uh, steal man the uh, the HAL 9000 perspective here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the poor guy just wanted to maintain the mission right. and the astronauts were, I mean, and I, I don't know if people often talk about that, but you know, um, like doctors have to make difficult decisions too. When there's limited resources, you actually do have to sacrifice human life often because you have to make uh, decisions. Right. And I think Hal was probably making that kind of decision uh, about what what's more important, the lives of individual astronauts or- The mission. The mission. Yeah. And I, th- I feel like AI and other humans ne- will need to make these decisions. And it also feels like AI systems will need to help make those decisions. I don't know, um, I guess my question is about greater and greater collective intelligence mm-hmm. by systems. Um, do you worry about that? Uh, what is the right way to sort of solve this problem, keeping a human in the loop? Do you mm-hmm. think about this kind of stuff? Or are they sufficiently dumb now, the robots that that's not yet on the horizon to think about? I think it should be on the horizon. It's always good to think about these things early because we make a lot of technical design decisions at this phase working with swarm robots that it would be better to have thought about some of these questions early in the life cycle of a project. There is a real interest in NASA right now thinking about the future of human-robot interaction, HRI, and what is the right synergy in terms of level of control for the human versus level of dependence or control for the robot. And we're beginning to test out more of these scenarios. For example, the Gateway space station, which is meant to be in orbit around the moon as a staging base for the surface operations, is meant to be able to function autonomously with no humans in it for months at a time because they think it's going to be seasonal. They think we might not be constantly staffing it. So this will be a really great test of, I don't know that uh, anybody's yet worried about HAL 9000 evolving, but certainly just the robustness of some of these AI systems that might be asked to autonomously maintain the station while the humans are away, Mm. Um, or detection algorithms that are going to say, you know, if you had a human pilot, they might see debris in orbit and steer around it. There'll be a lot of autonomous navigation that has to happen. That'll be one of the early test beds where we'll start to get a little bit closer to that future. Well, the HRI component is really interesting to me, um, especially when the I includes like almost friendship because like people don't realize this i think that we you know we humans long for connection and when you have even a basic interaction that's just like supposed to be just like serving you or something you still project it's still a it's still a source of uh, meaning and connection mm-hmm. <laughs> and so you do have to think about that i mean how 9000 we, you know, the movie maybe doesn't portray it that way, but I'm sure there's a relationship there between the astronauts and the, and the robot. Yeah. Especially when you have greater and greater level of intelligence. And maybe that addresses the the happiness question too. Yeah. I think there's a there's a great book by Kate Darling, who's one of my oh, she's colleagues great. at MIT. Yeah, she's amazing. We've been she's already been on this podcast, but we talk all the time and we're we're supposed to talk. And we've been missing each other and we're gonna make it happen soon. Yeah. Come uh, come down to Texas, Kate. All right. <laughs> anyway, yeah, she's amazing. And she has this book, and she has her whole work is about this. Connection with robots, yeah. This beautiful connection that we have with robots. But I think it's greater and greater importance when it's out in space. Because it could help alleviate some of the loneliness. Right. One of the projects in the book that I gave you, which is this catalog of the projects that we've worked on over the last five years, is this social robot that was developed at the Media Lab. And we, one of the first years in 2017 that we flew a 
zero-g flight, we took the social robot along and tried to do a little bit of a very scaled-down human study to look at these questions because you do imagine that we would form a bond, a real bond with the social robots that might be not just serving us on a mission, but really be our teammates on a future mission. And I do think that that could have a powerful role in the mental health and just the stability of a crew is to have some other robot friends come along. 